I should think not. They both look as young, don't they? Another key role at the beginning was held by the first director, Warris Hussain, who curiously was not brimming over with enthusiasm for the new series. He's now a successful filmmaker in American, America and in Britain. When we caught up with him, we asked him to cast his mind back 25 years or more to those first days of Doctor Who. <laughs> Well, the first episode came into being because Sidney Newman, who was the new head of drama at the BBC, wanted to find a new way of doing programmes for kids. And uh, he decided that there would be this strange man who lived in a phone box, which once you went inside would become a spaceship. That was the original premise. It was literally old man, phone box, spaceship. Feel it, you feel it? It's a faint vibration. It's alive! It's not connected to anything, unless it's through the floor. Look, I've had enough. Let's go and find a policeman. Yes, all right. The children's department at that time was very traditionally run and the people who were involved with that were very um, apprehensive about this new thing and um, I think they gave it about six weeks of life. I can't say I was a very willing director on this. I was kind of press ganged as a contract director into doing it. So in some ironic way, I, I certainly didn't know that I was in on something that was going to be this well thought of and indeed this long lasting. She is in there. Who's the dog? Barbara. We had this incredible business of trying to get them from the exterior scenes into this phone box, looking as if it was all right to open a couple of narrow doors and walk into this vast space. Close the door, Susan. In the first episode, we had uh, this story took place uh, in uh, the cave ages and people looking for fire. And uh, the villain and the hero Figure, both have this incredible fight with clubs and a lot of grunting. I encouraged the actors to fight fairly violently. We had a fight arranger. Anyway, in the end, um, this man crushes the villain's head out of camera, and then um, I actually cut to the results of what had happened, which is fairly gory. And um, Verity absolutely refused to let me use the shot and reminded me this was for kids. And um, it was only then I had to sort of get drawn back into the reality of what we were actually making this for. It was for children. So we cut out this sort of very gory, uh, mangled mess that I had shot. <laughs> A lot of people have forgotten uh, the first episodes. Uh, no one even realizes I was the first ep director. And in fact, um, the BBC even forgot they had a celebration about five years ago, where they had a reunion of all the uh, actors and directors. And I wasn't even invited until I found out it was happening, and I invited myself. I stopped at the door by someone saying, um, have you got an invitation? I said, I sincerely hope so. Even if I haven't got one in my hand, I should, because I was the first person to start this thing off. So um, that's how long it's been running. And um, I don't think the BBC knew, actually, what sort of show it had on its hands. Well, we haven't forgotten him, and it's amazing, you know, because by a miracle of time travel and television, he has joined us here. Welcome, Maurice Hussain. Are you looking forward to this weekend of Whoism? I am. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at things that um, I've forgotten about. You haven't seen for years and years and years. That's well, thank right. you for joining us. We'll be talking to you again later, and also to Caroline Ford and Russell Enoch. So we shall look forward to more tales from Who. Well, after the break, we have the first Doctor Who story ever, entitled An Unearthly Child. This story was first transmitted on television the day after President Kennedy's assassination, almost 27 years ago. Even now, the first episode is a supreme example of vintage science fiction. So stay with us and cast your minds back to 1963 and witness how a legend was born. knows the galaxy quite like I do. Of course, that is why we are here. The Dominators will be there with you tomorrow at three on Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> 